Uh, hello and welcome to another video on the channel. Today is going to be half a sort of Southampton review because we didn't manage to do one previous to now. And then it's going to be half an Arsenal preview. I know it's hard to get those words mixed up, so I've done my best <laughs> not to there. And I'm joined by Ben as always. How are you, mate? Yeah, mate, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. What are your kind of thoughts on the game at the weekend? I know your thoughts well, at half time might be different to your thoughts at full time. What are you thinking overall about the game? I didn't really get a chance to watch it because we were three in the morning. But um, I caught the last like, 20, 20, 25 minutes. So you and the bit that I watched was yeah. really, really good. You caught, you caught the bit in the fir- actually pretty decent. Yeah, I heard, I heard in the first half we were all right, but we we just been sloppy. I heard it was all right, and we played. We were playing well. Yeah, we were just giving away sloppy free kicks. We didn't need to give away. It's a team. Like I was able to watch do that. full games. I've maybe got maybe a bit more of an idea of how we played. Um, mm. The first half, we kind of is one of those where we started badly and then kind of just didn't get going after that. Yeah, I don't think we had a shot on target in the first half. Yeah, it's never a good start. Is it? It's like. I feel like we almost gave Southampton too much respect. Like we yeah. allowed them to play a bit too much. Mm. And obviously, if you allow a good team like Southampton time to play, they're going to give you problems, aren't they? Oh, yeah, 100%. If you give James Ward Prowse two free kicks and two scoreable positions, he's going to score. Yeah, if we start with like if we start with the first goal, like why is John McGinn marking Vestergaard? I have no idea. It should be Mings on Vestergaard, really. I, I know it's meant to it be no marking and we're trying to be clever with it, but like it's sure, just it's the basics. It doesn't work, does it? Like no, it's very circumstantial. I remember a few years ago, um, probably the best example I can find is uh, Liverpool used zone marking uh, like yeah. three four years ago. They were conceding a lot of goals from set pieces and corners. Because then of zonal marking. This is an issue, though. He changes it to man marking when Van Dyke comes in. Then, yeah. the last few years since Van Dyke's been there, they've hardly conceded any goals from set pieces. Exactly. And I, th- I don't get where it's come from because we, we didn't do it last season, as far as I remember. I can't remember us doing it too much last year. I think we, we didn't really use zonal marking much last year, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think we did. We did concede a lot of goals from set pieces last year, though, didn't we? So maybe yeah. the is because we conceded so many goals last season, switch you up a bit this year. But either way, you shouldn't have John Regan and Yannick Vestergaard, one of the tallest players in the league. Doesn't make sense. What are you doing? Right. You can't even get, blame John McGinn for it, can you? Cause he's got oh, no. It, hands, it, they? Right. Yeah, it's not his fault. He's just doing what he's been told to do. Yeah. And I think Mings uh, is kind of close enough to it, but like not, you can't yeah. really do much about it. Either then, way, it's a fantastic yeah. header. You're in saving yeah. it, so it's not Martinez's fault. Like from a Southampton point of view, it's a great cross and great header. But from our point of yeah. view, like, you should be doing a lot better. Oh yeah, the marking should be better. If you mark that properly, they don't score from that, in my opinion. Yeah, and then the second goal. I believe, was the free kick from a bit further yeah. right, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that, that was the first free kick. That was the one where Louise kind of took him down and then he they scored the free kick after that one. Yeah, it? yeah, I think so. Again, like, I said this on Twitter, like, you've got a free, they've got a free kick specialist. Why are you giving them free kicks like that? Yeah. It's it, bit, it doesn't really make sense. Make sense. No. And then... The second free kick is outstanding. Oh, both free, both free kicks are outstanding. You gotta give full credit. You're not saving them. Everyone's moaning, but oh, Martinez didn't move. Martinez this, Martinez that. What is he supposed to do? Yeah, they're as far in top corner as you're going to get it. You always get fans moaning if you keep hasn't made a save in the game, but like exactly, he couldn't. Not even the best keeper in the world saving them. No, I think the thing people are looking at is the fact that Southampton had four shots on target and scored four goals, but like Martinez can't do anything about any of them, can he? No, there's four and real goals. Either way, you look at it. Yeah. But from a Villa perspective, why are we giving away those free kicks when we know that we shouldn't be on the pitch? Wasn't the second one a needless handball from Cash? I wouldn't say he's needless because if he, I don't, if, 
think if he doesn't do that, like all cut throw and goal. Mm. However, he got caught out of position a bit, and like he was yeah. forced into making that handball because he was out of position. Mm. I feel like Cash. He has the raw attributes to be a great Premier League right back, but he's that's what he is. Still at the moment. Young. He's still a bit raw. Yeah, he'll be like, there We've seen a lot from him that's been really good so far. Yeah, so I can't office, really it? say much about him, but yeah, mm. it's a it's a bit of a stupid thing to do, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, all the way you look at it, we did play well. Yeah, the scoreline doesn't reflect that. We conceded mm. four goals. But look at the stats. And I know stats don't... Stats don't say you deserve to win a game or you should win a game. But really, we just weren't clinical enough. Are those stats kind of skewed by the fact that Southampton were already 4 0 up and then kind of took the foot up, I guess, So You know, you could say that. But even then, they're still there. We should be taking the chances that we had. Oh, I heard... Trezeguet had three chances to score. Yeah, they're all McCarthy good saves. just made some unreal saves. All good saves, to be fair. Yeah, uh, shall we go mm, kind of the game of his life? Yeah, shall we kind of go on to the fourth side hunting goal? That 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 was just um, that was just unreal. Yeah, it's, it means world class from Danny Ings, and you're not saving it. You can do maybe give him a bit less space, but I mean, you can kind of understand what Kant is trying there. Yeah, you, you're not saving it. And it's Danny Ings in form, so... Yeah. If you kind of don't do that, he kind, of, kind of turns you the other side. Yeah. So, yeah, like Danny Ings is in incredible form at the moment. There's not really much... Yeah, he like is. That. I have seen he's out Just for six weeks now. Yeah, he's out for a while. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's around He's out for a while, which is going to affect Southampton massively. Be interesting yeah, to see how Southampton do without him. Mm. We've got Chad Adams up front. Yeah, then I've Chad Adams, I've got Oberfemi, haven't they, and Shane Long. Yeah. So I guess they'll just rotate between those three, won't they? They've got, they've got some good strikers to fair to Unless they switch their system and go 4 2 3 1 with Adams as a main striker, just up there on his own. Yeah, they could do that. I mean, they've got the midfield options to do that, I think. Mm. But... I don't know. It's, it's up for debate. This isn't a Southampton channel, so we'll wait for <laughs> T-Lang. And get back on... Talk about the Villa goals. Yeah, get back on how Villa played in the second half. More of this I thought Ming's, is, thought Ming's yeah. head was good. He's a great ball in by Jack. Yeah, it was a brilliant ball. Yeah. Right, so that's what he can do, though. He can create something yeah. literally out of nowhere. Literally, the game was heading into, like, what, 4-0, 5-0 Southampton win. And then yeah. Jack turns the... Jack kind of takes things into his own hands. He's like, and he switches and he, on. He, I don't get why we couldn't have done that in the first half, but it's been already. It? It's never simple. You've, I don't want to talk about Southampton too much again, but you gotta give them credit for the first half. I thought they played yeah. really well, but like I said before, we gave them a bit too much credit. We 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 never got going, did we? We gave them a bit too heard. much respect, and like. We're, we're just too slow, both mentally and physically, first half. Yeah. You just can't do that in the Premier League. In the second half, we switched on. Yeah. So did they take the fast goal, guess? They probably did, but... Yeah. That Ming's still goal, Jack on. kind of cuts inside his defender, whips in, great ball, Ming's flick header into the top, uh, yeah. top corner. It's a, it's a pretty nice goal, actually. I, mm. I didn't celebrate it at all because I was just thinking <laughs> the cancellation and Southampton and we're going to win 4 5 1. But yeah, they, as oh, well. before, then we kind of got a couple more and made it at least like. It was a good run. Yeah, good run from Watkins as well for the penalty. Yeah. Got got the run, gone to get his shot off, rebounded Jacks from the penalty. If you feel contact in the box, you're going to go down. Yeah. You learn that on Sunday morning when you're refereeing, it gets annoying. But if, if there's contact, then they go down, you have to give it. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 foot is, the foot is above the channel. <laughs> the foot is above the player's waist. It's above yeah. Jack's waist, and it's above his own waist. So, really, yeah. it, it is a dangerous tackle because his studs are up as well. I mean, it's not many players work and play in work and playing about it, were they? So no. That just tells you everything you need to know, really. Yeah. And then it was very good penalty for Watkins, to be fair to him. 
Yeah, it's a quite nice day. A few things I saw from Brentford fans before, like around the summer, signing them is that he is not very good at pens, but like he took I don't know, he's one of the best I've seen for a while. Exactly, yeah. good player. I think he missed a couple for Brentford. I might be wrong. Yeah. But I'm sure, he did. I think he did. Yeah, yeah it kind of uh, knocks your confidence a bit, doesn't it? Uh, Jack was like trying to take it. I think. I think Jack wanted yeah. it, but I think Smith. You would, though, wouldn't Watkins. Yeah, you have to because Watkins is a striker and he needs the confidence. Yeah, he's right, yeah he hasn't scored since Liverpool. Liverpool. Like, oh yeah, he gets in to four out of six now in the Prem, and mm. that's pretty good record, isn't it? Like, yeah, so. with the, the quality of the service that he's had hasn't been great since the Liverpool game. And yeah. It's kind of annoying for him because he has to drift up wide just to get involved. Mm-hmm. Which that means we've got no strike in the box. Yeah. And it's not his fault. This, the quality just hasn't been there in the service for him. No. Yeah. So so we move on it's... to um, Jack's uh, final yeah. goal in like the, la- like the 96, 97th minute. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a weird one. Mm. Don't know what's going on there. It's shot, it's gone in. The keepers watched it go in. I was like, mm. it's great technique on the sh- on the shot. Oh, it's a great goal. Uh, the technique to get it like that flat and always without any back lift. Uh, yeah, it, it's not real. Like it, it kind of doesn't move, does it? It kind of just arrows yeah. into the bottom corner. Yeah, it like, that far bounces out, and goes well, in. For it to have I think that it's the power like, to not move, like mm. at all in the air. It was all real. He's Incredible. almost a Ronaldo technique. Yeah. Like, you know how Ronaldo kind of cut, took, um, cuts inside and then almost knuckleballs it. It's almost like yeah. a Ronaldo S technique. Mm. It's a great goal. Right. Can't hey, take hey, it away hey, from him. How good is he? Like... No, Jack. Jack's easily top 10 players in the league for me. He's That's just amazing. something else. Form, yeah. could, could you imagine him if he was playing for? I'm not going to say bigger club, but a bigger side. Yeah, I get what you mean. So, yeah. you Manchester City's or your Liverpool's. I've, I, I've, I've said it for a while. He'd fit directly in a Liverpool. He just I've, I've, the, I've, the way I've they play. Uh, yesterday, um, he get into any team in the world other than Bayern Munich at the moment. I Bayern Munich would get any team he wouldn't get into in world football. They're getting cheaper, most he can get into Bayern Munich, so... <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit... Like, I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Real Madrid or Barcelona put in a massive bid for him in the summer. It would cost my heck a lot of money. Would, yeah. But I still wouldn't be surprised if they tried, if they tried it. Barca have got no money at the moment. Yeah, that's true. But I'm, I'm kind of so, thinking if Messi goes, that frees up a lot of Love space. It would, but I don't think Jack would leave to go. I don't. I don't think Jack's gonna leave Villa now. I think he would. Like, I think he would to go to either Barcelona or Real Madrid. It depends. on not it really? It's I, don't like, think he, I don't think he'd go to another Premier League club. But I think if like a massive European club came up, came in through and be too tempting. You can't say no, can you? I think if Bayern Munich, Juventus, PSG. Barcelona and Real Madrid, one of those coming through him, I think he's gone. I don't think they would, though. That's, that, that, that's the problem. Mm. But I hate to well, say I it, but I think that would just be too tempting for him. Oh, it would. Like, he wouldn't have to play against anyone. Other. They can play Champions League football, be with playing with the best players yeah. in the world. <laughs> he's asked right. Burnley away. Yeah. He <laughs> can play at the Burnley so... or the New Camp. Like week in week out, August turf mm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really know which one I'm. I don't know which one I'm. Uh, shall we move more on to the Arsenal game now? Yeah, let's do it. Um, what have you made of Arsenal's last few, last um few games? I thought they played well. Yeah, but you look at you look at them in Europe. They're losing to Rapid Vienna for a while. It took them. It took them. A while to get into gear in that game. That is their kind of second string side, though, in fairness. Oh, yeah, obviously. Oh, they made but... a lot of changes in that game. Oh, yeah, they did. But then you look at the uh, Man United game. Yes, they won, and they did play well, but it took a penalty for it to decide the game, sort of thing. Mm. It's one of them where if, if we go and we turn off what we did against Liverpool, we can get something from it. 
Yeah, we just have I, to play well. I said on the Business M podcast that I'm involved with, like, I was exceptionally like impressed with Arsenal. I don't yeah. think that makes sense, but pass it, pass it was unreal. I was, I was very impressed with Arsenal uh, against Man United. Yeah. Oh, like, I was as well. They defended superbly. Partey and Nenny in the mm. midfield were incredible. Like that Gabriel tackle. Yeah. Sorry. Like when they went forward, when they got the chance to have those breakaway attacks, like they used the ball pretty mm. well. It went as wasteful as they have been in previous games. Like I thought, Arsenal yeah, was very good. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, like Gabriel, yeah, great almost, Gabriel, kind of similar to Van Dijk, has almost transformed their defence. Oh, they look so yeah. much more confident at the back now. Oh, yeah, they do. David Luiz looks like he's improved a lot. No, the lot. thing with Gab- yeah, David Luiz, though, if he has a good player next to him, he looks so much better. Like, he almost yeah. needs, like, a great centre back next to him to look really good himself. Like do you look in the look at the season where Chelsea won the league on the Kante, he had two pretty good centre backs next to him. I think he was out to play Kuwait yeah. and was it Gary Cahill? John Terry wasn't it? He's either Cahill well, or Terry, wasn't it? Yeah. Cahill was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Then he had then you had Ashley very good better there. Like the season where um, he was outstanding under Kante of Chelsea. Yeah. So he's like, I think he's one of those. PSG, like, Thiago Silva. Yeah. He just needs a top class centre back next to him and then he can kind of. Yeah. I feel like it almost takes flourish himself. So then, like, he doesn't yeah. need to do everything and then he can kind of drive in his own way. This is going to sound weird, but he's more of a flary centre back. Kind of like he likes to rampage forward. And if he doesn't have a good defender next to him to cover for him, mm. that's when it's a bit yeah, like. Okay. Yeah, he gets caught out. So in the same way that um, Roberto Firmino is a defensive forward, he's saying that uh, Dabu <laughs> is a defensive striker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shall we talk more about Villa? Complement each other well. and kind of how we expect Villa to kind of line up tactically against Arsenal. Drop Barkley, play mm. Harrahan, play for the free kicks. That's one way of looking at it, yeah. It's a big call, but mm. Barkley, as good as he is, and as much as I love him, he hasn't performed the last two games. It's so sort of, it's kind of missing. Like John McGinn, can't, can't you? Say John McGinn yeah, has but performed equally. M- as McGinn, McGinn will work harder than Barkley, if you hear me. As in, yeah. McGinn will be that box-to-box midfielder. He won't stop running for the whole game. Yeah. Barkley, I feel like, if things don't go his way, he will. he won't perform as well as he could mm. but McGinn will just keep working and I feel yeah. like against a team like Arsenal we're going to need that really alongside um, Louise well against any top six team like in quotation marks away from home you're going to need to, you're going to, need to work hard you're going to need to work hard and you're going to need to play for set pieces and if yeah. you've got Connor on the pitch when you play for those set pieces it kind of gives you an added threat level yeah, definitely. I think it's a, I think it's criminal how he hasn't played since Fulham, honestly. Yeah, our, our I can't believe he hasn't kicked the ball. Our set pieces since Fulham have been pretty poor as well. I know he scored a couple against Liverpool, but like taking like the amount of set pieces we have had into account, like the delivery just hasn't been good enough. No, it hasn't. And that's the sort of delivery the that Watkins like. would thrive off. Yeah. And our two centre backs because we've got two big centre backs that go up for the corners and it's yeah, just yeah it's just a bit of a waste not having kind of on the pitch, sometimes on the like pitch put in those deliveries especially when you got to play a lot of Jack on the pitch as well who's going to win you those free kicks and you yeah. got Harahan who can take a wicked free kick just doesn't I think, get I think it's almost free just a. To... Talk about kind of as a set piece specialist because he he does have this innate goal scoring ability, doesn't he? Yeah, he, like, he makes really good runs into the box, and when he is in the box, he can kind of finish really well, can't he? He scores so many important goals for us, though. He like he got great 
like strike on him, hasn't he? Like, oh yeah, look look at his goal against West Brom in the playoffs. That goal yeah, exactly. was just incredible. Like it's it's almost kind of like Dean Smith has kind of just forgot Harahan's there since Barkley came. Yeah. In. Like metaphorically, like it, it's kind of this weird scenario where you you kind of bring in Barkley and then kind of feel like you have to play him. Yeah. But it's been pretty much game time, any so. Mm. It's if I was kind of, I'd be very frustrated. If I was kind of, I'd be looking to move in January. Yeah, I'd be looking for at least a loan move whilst Barkley's still here because he's a player with such quality. He could do a job for any Premier League side. I think. But I think. Kind of, I think Harriham will get into any Premier League team in the bottom six. Oh, I agree. Like a team, oh, you like your West Brom's um, get into West Brom, yeah. He'd start every week and week out for those sides, wouldn't he? But... I don't think he'd leave permanently. I think mm. Smith likes him too much to let him leave permanently. But kind of sticks on loan deal just for yeah. just to allow him to play games. Yeah. But then on the on the flip side of that, like what if one of our centre midfielders then gets injured? Like Harahan would be perfect to slot in. Yeah, he would. So you, you think about what's so best well. for Harahan and what's best for Aston Villa? Well, well Harahan should be should be a substitute that does get onto the pitch every yeah. not every game but most games. Mm-hmm. The fact that, that it just baffles me how he can play so well against Fulham and then not get looking, especially when we've lost our last two. Yeah, and things bit, haven't looked great. It's strange. Like, it kind of makes you wonder if anything's gone on behind the scene. Yeah. Like maybe well, Harahan was complaining too much about Barkley coming in and taking his place, or mm-hmm. like I have heard he's doing his coaching stuff. badges with the Irish FA. Mm. Maybe, maybe he's because he's doing that kind of. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just don't get it because he played so well against Fulham. And it's just like, how's he not get kicked the ball? Mm-hmm. Since. Shall we move um, now on to your official predicted lineup for the, for the game? Yeah. It'll be Martinez in goal. I think it will be Cash, Cons and Mings, Target, Louise, McGinn, Harahan, Jack, Watkins, Trezeguet. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that Harahan going to come in for Barkley? Yeah, but. But well, that's what I'd like to happen. Whether it will happen, I highly doubt it. For me, I think he's going to be unchanged again. I just I think, I think Smith like over the Troy or yeah, Troy or come he, out. He um, tried the game for um, Troy, but the team that played the majority of the game, I think, will stay the same. Yeah, I just well, they played well. You can't fault him, right? Yeah, I just think Smith kind of values consistency and. I think he'll just give that lineup like one more chance to kind of prove themselves before he kind of then make changes. Yeah, because it's Brighton at home after it be... Arsenal, isn't it? So yeah, we just need to get past Arsenal, don't we? Really, and if we can, I'll take a point. Arsenal, I'll well, take a point any day. Yeah, I think everyone would, wouldn't they? Just to kind of stop the. So I remember last year. Bit of a losing run we got. Yeah. I remember last year when we went to Arsenal away, we should have come away with a point there. But dare I say it, they are robbed us out of a point, at least in my opinion. Oh, yeah, we should have had a penalty for the. I still don't get how that like, was. Kick it onto one of their defenders' hands? Or... Yeah, it was um, Socrates' hand. He handballed it on the line. Yeah. And we didn't get anything. And then they had players in our wall. For yeah, other things, freaky. Okay. Dodgy one, isn't it? Yeah, there, there was a few dodgy decisions. I, I remember the penalty being a bit dodgy as well. Yeah, I'm a bit wary of um, going on for too long here. So, um, yeah, can I grab your uh, official score prediction for the game? One-one. Hmm. I reckon Watkins score for Villa and all by me. I'm gonna go. Through. I'm going to go for the same as the home game against Arsenal last season. We kind of we, we defend really well, like counter attack brilliantly, and then Watkins gets a winner for us. Yeah. 
think I think yeah, that's yeah. a really similar game to the one at the end of last season. I know Arsenal have improved a lot since then, but don't know if I could take it. Yeah. It's nerve wracking that game was. Mm-hmm. Any final thoughts uh, from you before we before we go? No, not really. It's just it's just gonna be tough, isn't it? Uh, just for everyone watching this to uh, like and subscribe the video. Yeah, please like and subscribe the video. Yeah, subscribe to us and like the video. Yeah, it would, we meant. would really appreciate it. <laughs> um, what are we on now? You're on 77 subscribers as we're filming this? I believe so. I mm. Yeah. If we can get to 100 kind of within the next uh, month or so, that'll be amazing for us. So. We appreciate anyone who uh, subscribes and likes and maybe leaves a comment. 78. Yeah, 78. So anyone who um, can help us out is massively appreciated. Yeah, we would really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for joining me, Ben. I'd no worries, mate. Thanks for having me. More from you in the, in the future. Oh, yes, most definitely. <laughs>